George Soros and a, and a, a stream of other uh, connected people. Uh, but they connect at the next level of the pyramid into the same organizations that the neocons controlling Bush um, connected into. So all we've done, Rebecca, is move from one uh, mask on the same face to another mask on the same face. However, what's, what's happened is that um, I've talked for, for years about a, a technique I call problem, reaction, solution. You create the problem and then you offer the solution. Um, and uh, George Bush has uh, been used over the last eight years to create endless problems, military problems, financial problems, desperate financial problems. And now, now what we're seeing is Barack Obama being moved in as the apparent, emphasis on the apparent, uh, solution to these problems. And he's got in by saying three words, basically, especially one, change, uh, uh, another one, believe, another one, hope. At no point have these words had any specifics attached to them in terms of what that means. And th th this, is a, this is a massive mind control operation because what they've done is created a situation where Barack Obama, over the last two years, particularly over the last one, has become a, a screen on which people project their versions of what is hope uh, and what is change and what is something to believe in. And so he, uh, by not specifying what those mean to him, has allowed himself to be this, um, this screen on which all these people around America have projected their version of it. Now we're going to specifics because he's, the deal's done, he's got in, and what's happened? All these players um, that have been uh, manipulating the Republican side of the pyramid for years, who were in the Clinton administration, the Bill Clinton administration, so the, the two uh, periods as president, and, and, and the networks around uh, George Soros and, uh, and Zbigniew Brzezinski, they're all being brought in to be the change administration of Barack Obama when it's just more of the same. Um, and it's been a complete con job because if you look at Obama's background in one of the most corrupt political systems in the world in Chicago, um, it stinks to high heaven and this is absolutely not a man to be trusted. And I'll just say one more thing. You know, do we really think, it seems a lot of people do, that um, within this uh, system that we are going to have a truly independent person who is going to appear out of nowhere, he's going to attract record amounts of funding for a presidential campaign from the very um, sources in Wall Street, etc., that his change is perceived to be going to challenge and run the slickest campaign in American history and all that is just going to come out of nowhere my goodness me I mean it's naivety anonymous um, he was selected a long time ago back in the 80s when he and Brzezinski were at the Columbia University together uh, and uh, uh, Brzezinski as a, uh, a major um, uh, lecturer and professor etc and, and uh, Obama as a student and the Trilateral Commission and its uh, associated foundation network, like the Ford Foundation, have nursed the boy through um, to, to um, what he's become. He never came out of nowhere. He's been planned for a very long time. And it's, 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 it's a staggering fact that he's about to be inaugurated a few weeks from now, and he's still yet not provided the proof that he was born in the United States when his half-sister, his half-brother, and his grandmother in Kenya say he was born there. Yeah, um, there was a lot of controversy around that, and of course they've kind of squashed that. I've been watching that a little bit, David, how they've been doing that. Yeah. And, um, you know, you're absolutely right when you talk about the pyramid. I mean, when you have, we talk about the United States, the Senate and the Congress, well, you know, both sides of the coin, you know, Republicans and Democrat, both are, are, are still in those, you know, political, you know, separation as much as one's a Republican and one's a Democrat. But really, what does that mean? I mean, it, it used to mean something, or it was supposed to mean something, but in, in the old days, but really, it, it is really this, it's just the opposite side of the same coin. That's all it is. 
That's all it is. And uh, Barack Obama is, um, and this will sound staggering to many people um, uh, in the United States who have, uh, have bought the Obama uh, myth. Um, he's far more dangerous than Bush because uh, he can sell a line. Uh, George Bush could only take this so far because he had no communication skills um, and was, you know, a, a, shall we say, a, a, a blatantly not the most intelligent man ever to walk the world. Oh my and goodness, that's an understatement. I know. So, so um, <laughs> he could only take this so far. And, you know, people talk about fascism. And, um, you know, the writer Webster Tarpley uh, uh, makes a very good point when he points out that, you know, fascism is perceived as a top-down hierarchical structure where the few um, impose their will on the many. Now, it ends up like that, and that's why we think of it like that. But when you look at the um, uh, fascist movements in, in Germany and in Italy and in other places, they actually um, uh, came out of a, uh, a movement of the people. We had in Germany... Um, Again, a massive problem, uh, incredible inflation, uh, economic collapse, military collapse, uh, Germany in a terrible state because of the reparations imposed after the First World War. And along came a man who talked about hope, who talked about uh, giving Germany its pride back and, and its standing in the world, and who um, talked about having something to believe in. And his name was Adolf Hitler. And, and um, he was, uh, people forget, he was voted into power to start with. Um, and with a massive wave of um, uh, support from, from the people because of what they perceived him to stand for. Uh, and, and there was great unity. Uh, Obama talks about unity. Well, unity in, in and of itself is irrelevant. It's what the uni unity is behind. Uh, there was great unity in Germany behind Hitler and the Nazis for a long time until it suddenly dawned on them what had actually born. It wasn't a dream, it was a nightmare. Similar thing happened in, uh, in, in Italy, a people's movement um, in, uh, in terms of uh, bringing Mussolini to power and stuff like that. And, and, and the, uh, when, I, when I see um, Obama uh, talking about having a civilian um, national... Uh, security force, when I see him talking about compulsory um, uh, for, for school children and, and, and college students to, to do in effect national service or, or community service, not because they, they, they're inspired to, but because they're told to, it's compulsory, and, um, and, and many other things, you know, it, 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 it's it doesn't feel good to me at all. And because it's being sold um, as hope, as something to believe in, as coming together, as unity, as giving America its pride back and all this stuff, um, some very unpleasant uh, uh, policies can be introduced under, under the guise of that, um, which only a few years down the road will, will a lot of people realize what they've actually um, signed up to. Uh, that's the danger, because he's got this... Well, if, if, you're, if, you're, if you're awake, he hasn't got the ability. He's an open book. I mean, he's the most openly uh, fraudulent speaker and, and, and manipulator of, um, of the audience. But if you're not, then you can, you, you can um, see that he can, uh, he can get people to believe in things um, because he has done. He's got them to believe in him when, when he's actually got no political record. His background in Chicago is full of... Um, dirty uh, uh, deals and supporting crooks like uh, Tony Resco and stuff, the slum landlord who got massive amounts of money from uh, the Chicago state system to run public housing and uh, is now in jail because um, he uh, defrauded uh, the, uh, the state out of um, a, a lot of money and, uh, and also um, fraudulently um, uh, was using corruption to get uh, from businesses if they wanted to do business with the state because he was controlling those organizations they had to do business with within the state. And, and Obama's right in the middle of this. And, and when, when, when I started to re um, research his background, uh, when you see his history in Chicago and the thought that he went through an entire 
primary uh, campaign with Hillary Clinton and an entire election campaign with John McCain. And the mainstream media in America did not bring out uh, anything but a tiny fraction of what there is to bring out about Barack Obama. People are gonna, who, who bought the Obama myth are going to be very, very disappointed and indeed very shocked um, in, in uh, the next few years. And I suspect, Rebecca, that because um, he's going to have a good honeymoon period because of all the hype, I, I really do expect that they want, they'll want to squeeze every second out of that honeymoon period and things will start to kick on very fast once he's um, officially um, inaugurated in, uh, in uh, January. You know, I've been, I've been watching, you know, of course they, they post a, a lot of different things um, uh, about who he's choosing and who he's not choosing and, you know, all of that good stuff and, and all the things that he's putting into place and... and uh, it, it's just amazing to me. Um, this he's got some kind of a, and, and this just happened just a couple of days ago, where he was putting up a uh, an 850 uh, billion uh, dollar package to supposedly, um, uh, I guess, assist uh, you know the United States in their financial thing. And I'm thinking to myself. I'm sorry, does he not understand what's really going on here with the, the financial aspect of this world? I mean, it's, it's you know, he's, he's like trying to pretend that it's business as usual. It's not going to be business as usual. And I'm thinking to myself, you know, when all of this stuff starts falling apart, what is the rest of the United States going to do? Because all of this is just, it, it's, it's, again, it's about what you talked about in the very beginning, which is, people perceive him as being some kind of a savior or whatever but he's really just kind of in a sense uh, regurgitating a lot of the other things well we're going to do this we're going to do that well those things can't be done that's not the reality of the situation it just well, can't I be mean, done well yeah absolutely when, when, when you look at his um, his economic team um, he has appointed a guy called Paul Adolf Volker Trilateral Commission Council on Foreign Relations Bilderberg Group 3 uh, major op uh, groups within the network of um, global and American manipulation. Uh, he was the head of the Federal Reserve. Uh, oh my gosh, that's right. To 87. He is an absolute insider. Um, uh, another man who um, he's appointed is a guy called uh, Timothy Geithner, Bilderberg Group Trilateral Commission Council on Foreign Relations, who's going to be the Treasury Secretary. Um, uh, and th these are all people who operate in the circle around a man called um, uh, Robert Rubin. And um, he um, is uh, someone who has been um, uh, connected into the Clinton administration and connected into the whole network, as all these other people have, like Geithner, that has created the economic catastrophe, because that's what it is. We've not seen it become that yet, but that's what it's heading towards. Sure. So these people who have actually created the problem, here we go again, problem, reaction, solution, are now being appointed by uh, Mr. Change Obama to offer the solutions to the problems they have themselves created, and it will be to change society in a way that suits this Orwellian agenda, including a movement to a world central bank, which is what I've been predicting for uh, the best part of 20 years. Another guy uh, that he's uh, appointed to his election uh, is... Uh, economic uh, team. is a guy called Larry Summers, Bilderberg Group Trilateral Commission Council on Foreign Relations, um, who, um, when he was uh, chief economist of the World Bank in uh, 1991, he sent out a, a memo to, to the bank, um, which eventually became uh, public to his great embarrassment, in which he said that the bank should dump toxic waste in poor countries because the costs of the ensuing ill health and death would be lower. Now, this is a man that Mr. Change Obama has appointed to his economics team, along with the, all these other insiders um, uh, connecting into um, people like George Soros. And I'll tell you one of the, great, the greatest ironies, there are so many ironies about, about Obama and his presidency. The key man, as I said, uh, behind him, his real mentor in Svengali, is this guy, Zbigniew Brzezinski. Now, Zbigniew Brzezinski was... Um, National Security Advisor to Jimmy Carter at the end of the 70s, and he has admitted publicly in an interview with a Paris magazine a few years ago that he, um, as National Security Advisor, started funding, arming, and training 
um, quote, freedom fighters in Afghanistan to um, cause problems for the Soviet Union controlled uh, Afghanistan government in Kabul, the capital. And he says in this interview that he did that because he wanted to uh, manipulate and entice the Soviet Union to um, invade Afghanistan to protect their government from this, uh, this challenge um, by what he would call today terrorists. Um, it cost a million Afghan lives, that um, Soviet Union invasion of Afghanistan that followed, uh, which seemed to matter nothing at all to Brzezinski, who, who said, well, we wanted to give um, the Soviet Union and the, our, our other superpower in the world at that time their Vietnam, and, and they got their Vietnam. So what's the problem? Um, and of course, those, quote, freedom fighters, which he instigated, trained, and um, began funding, became known as the Mujahideen during the 10-year Soviet uh, occupation of Afghanistan, then it beca also became known as the Taliban, and that's where what is alleged to be Al-Qaeda uh, came out of. Now, here's the great irony, Rebecca. Barack Obama is saying we, we need to vastly increase the number of troops, including European troops, in Afghanistan, to fight the Taliban, which were initially uh, triggered, funded, and created in that form by the man behind Barack Obama, Zbigniew Brzezinski. This is, this is what happens when you've got the pyramid with the two parties on either side of it, um, and you've also got an agenda. The agenda is for the centralization of global power. Um, in the hands of a tiny few people with a world government, world central bank, world army, uh, microchip population, and a world currency, which would be all electronic, no physical cash. Now, the agenda is the key. That's the, that's the God. So any, you do anything that's necessary in that moment to advance that agenda. And so at one time, it suits the agenda to create the Mujahideen of the Taliban and bring uh, Osama bin Laden out of um, the 51st state of America, one of many, called Saudi Arabia, to front the whole thing up uh, with the resistance to the uh, Soviet Union in um, Afghanistan. But a bit further down the line, it suits the agenda to go to war with them, your own creation. Uh, and people say, well, that's a contradiction, but it's not, because the agenda stops it being a contradiction, because both those apparent contradictory uh, situations are connected um, by pursuit of the agenda uh, and what most is effective in that way at that time. And at the moment, it, it's most effective from their point of view to uh, send vast numbers of troops into Afghanistan to, uh, to go for the Taliban. This is, this is how it works. Once you know how it, um, once you how it fits together and what the techniques are, what appear on the public stage to be vast contradictions are not contradictions at all. I, um, I think that's probably part of what is um, going on when you look at, at, at the agendas that they've had in place, David, for many, many, many years. Um, when they start putting these things together, all of these things sometimes take 20, 30, 40, 50 years um, before whatever their agenda is can be in place. And they... they it's just amazing. Like yourself and other people have come on to my show, and they've they've shared all of these secrets and all of these things that that come out. And really, it's about opening people's eyes and letting them know that this is it's it's just not as it appears to be. Now, the the other thing that I wanted to to kind of uh, go with you with on this is I'd like to get back to um, the the children and and the school age and the college children and stuff what i would like to do though is just take a quick break and then when we come back i'd like to get into that aspect about how they're supposed to be servicing and serving by you know community service and all of that yeah okay, okay. so you guys hang on we're going to be right back with more of david in just a moment all right, welcome back, everyone. And again, we have David Ike with us, and we have been uh, very, very busy in the first part of this um, hour talking about Barack Obama, 
Uh, again, uh, I urge you to visit David's website. That's davidike.com. And, and David, I was reading the article, which is davidike.com slash Obama, um, where you wrote on that. And you were talking about how they want to have our children uh, kind of be mandatory, if you will. And it said so on the website um, to... Um, devote some of their time to community service and they wanted this for older children as well as for uh, college students and then I guess they got a lot of flack and they changed the, some of the verbiage and and to come back and that really is when you think about it that really is a mechanism where they are trying to unify um, the country by um you know, saying, oh, let's all get together and let's do something really, really good for each other by having our children do this and do that. And they're making many, many things mandatory. And again, it's, it's, it's watching the financial information. It's watching who he's picking and all of these things. And I was like, as soon as he got elected, all these things started to just become very crystal clear to me that he just has an agenda just like everyone else has an agenda. And he's, being manipulated just like the rest of the world basically is being manipulated. It's all been about manipulation and mind control and and that kind of stuff. So, you know, if you'd like to take the next few minutes, maybe talk a little bit more about that, about the manipulation, the mind control, as well as maybe what people can really start looking at to expand that so that they can themselves get out of that and look at, look at it from a different perspective. Obama is a is a front man. Uh, all presidents are front men, uh, and and they they stay there so long as they do as they're told, and they are selected on the basis that they will do as they're told, and that they can sell the policies of those uh, behind them. So uh, when you look again, it's so important to look back at um, Obama's history in um, in Chicago to see that this this man will do anything to uh, get elected and to get uh, what passes for power and it's only a power of a certain kind because the real power is in the shadows behind him Um, and as I said earlier he's got this honeymoon period Um, he's particularly um, got enormous numbers of young people behind him Um, and he's yeah and and just 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 like demagogues do um, and he's um, going to be used and he will willingly be used to um, uh, use these words like hope and coming together and uh, a new America and all the rest of it to um, get these uh, young people to um, form together and, and, and older people too to form together in uh, networks and organizations which are designed to actually be um, enforcers of the people in general um, uh, so you know Hitler had the Hitler youth movement um, yes. uh, they, they all do this stuff and it's quite interesting um, here's a quote from a, a, a Sabigny Brzezinski book which was written before Obama even ran for president he says in, in this book needed social reassessment can be encouraged by deliberate civil education uh, stresses the notion of service to a higher cause than oneself as some have occasionally urged a major step in that direction would be the adoption of an obligatory period of national service for every young adult perhaps involving a variety of congressionally approved domestic or foreign good works if you read Brzezinski's books before Obama was even heard of on a national uh, stage um, Obama's running on his policies and when you also um, go further back to the 1960s and um, a Brzezinski book called uh, Between Two Ages, America's Role in the Tech Technotronic Era. He says this in, in, in that book. The Technotronic Era involves the gradual appearance of a more controlled society. Such a society would be dominated by an elite, unrestrained by traditional values. Soon it will be possible to assert almost continuous surveillance over every citizen and maintain up-to-date complete files containing even the most personal information about the citizen. These files will be subject to instantaneous retrieval by the authorities. He wrote that 40 years ago, and he's been... been working for the networks to bring that about ever since and he, he also says this, this is very relevant to the Obama uh, presidency 
Today, again, 40 years ago, today we are again witnessing the emergence of transnational elites whose ties cut across national boundaries. It is likely that before long the social elites of, the most, of most of the more advanced countries will be highly internationalist or globalist in spirit and outlook. The nation state is gradually yielding its sovereignty. Further progress will require greater American sacrifices, in other words, giving its sovereignty away, more intensive efforts to shape a new world monetary structure, that's what this crash is all about now, sure. will have to be undertaken with some consequent risk to the present relatively favorable American position. And um, What does um, uh, Obama say? America's going to have to make sacrifices to, to solve all these problems and, and, and rebuild itself. And of course, as I've been saying in my books for goodness knows how many years, the war on the nation state, which Brzezinski was articulating there 40 years ago, is, is required to bring about what, what the aim is, which is a global centralized uh, uh, dictatorship run by a world government whose um, decisions are imposed by a world army and of course if you're going to have a world government um, that is dictating to the planet which is what globalization is all about that's just this thing unfolding in front of our eyes then you cannot have superpowers that can have the military and financial might to say to the world government um, we're not doing that so as I said years ago uh, around the time of the uh, invasion of Iraq they are using America to destroy America. That's the idea. That whole period of the Bush uh, eight years was about com completing the process, or virtually completing it, Obama's supposed to complete it, of destroying America in the sense that we know America militarily, and of course we're now seeing it financially. So when America is destroyed financially, militarily, etc., in terms of being a superpower, it can then be assimilated into this global centralized super state as it never could in its, its all-powerful military and um, economic might. So this is what it's about. This is what it's, it's doing. Now, what Obama's being brought in to do is to sell as coming together a new world um, uh, in the sense that he's been talking about the end of America as a nation state as we know it and uh, this includes um, absorbing America into a North American Union first of all with Canada and uh, Mexico and then uh, expanding down into Central and South America uh, just as we've got the European Union in, 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 in Europe now um, 70 to 75 percent of the laws that um, are imposed on British people um, are originating from the European Union and not the national parliament. And if uh, a, a, a law is made in, uh, in the European Union that is at odds with a law made in the British Parliament, the British Parliament law is invalid and has to be withdrawn. That's the level of centralized power we have and, uh, already, and that's what they want with this North American Union. Um, the end of the dollar, that's why, they, that's why they, they're attacking the dollar. They want the end of the dollar and they want a new North American uh, currency to replace the American dollar, the Canadian dollar and the peso. Um, and, 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 and so uh, Obama is the man who's being brought in with the silver tongue, i.e. reading someone else's words on autocue, um, to, to sell this final destruction of America as, not the final destruction of America, but the new America, the new way forward, everyone coming together in peace and harmony and all that stuff. Um, if only that was true, but it isn't. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a cover story for um, pushing this agenda on to very close to its, um, its ultimate end. Well, and so that being said, um, what is your consensus? What do you think? I mean, it's already happened as the Euro European Union. What do you think that people here in the United States in America can do that would maybe deflect some of what's going on? Is there anything that can be done with this, David? Whether it be in the Americas or the rest of the world, because it really is moving into that. We're Again, it's the the statement that you made, you create the problem, and then it's the reaction, and then we're going to be the savior. We're going to come and fix it. Yeah. They are the causing all of this. And, I, I, you know, and I, I'm really pretty dumbfounded that people can't see 
that they're doing that. I mean, here here in the United States, just to give you a really quick example, um, you know, here a few months ago, gas just absolutely went out outrageously high here and then all of a sudden it's just it dropped right back down and hadn't seen prices like this in many years now all of a sudden um, we don't hear that but we have other issues going on right we don't hear about that the gas just keeps yeah. dropping and dropping now all of a sudden um, the gas is going back up and OPEC is going to stop you know uh, production and you're going can you people not see the yo-yo that they're doing they try to keep people in this state of frustration this state of not knowing not understanding um, and here it goes it just goes on and on and on so well, what can I mean, we do what can we do well uh, the, the, there's different levels of this um, oh I mean, sure uh, yeah I mean if you, if you look at a, a purely um, uh, if you like five cents level uh, physical level, everyday experience level. Um, if we look at the numbers, the number of those who are knowingly manipulating this agenda into place are tiny, tiny compared with the global population. Uh, tiny with, in, in terms of the American population. Um, and, and so the only way that they can uh, impose their will upon the vast majority is to divide and rule the vast majority and to put them in a state of fear so that they are looking outside of themselves. This is what happens when people are in fear um, they look outside of themselves to other people to protect them from what they've been manipulated to fear and i.e. Um, I've got a problem tell me the solution and you're giving your power away all the time and and uh, divided and ruled, dividing and ruling people on the fault lines of religion political persuasion income bracket uh, color and all the rest of it which Obama is really really going to exploit this is not a man who is uh, uh, racism is, 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 is wrong um, he's going to really exploit that those divisions you watch in the next few years and um, uh, so these fault lines are what divides and rules the majority so the few can manipulate them and play them off against each other. And, and the general population is um, A, in a state of, of, of fear and confusion because of what's going on, and B, at war with itself, um, uh, blaming each other and, and, and trying to impose their belief systems on each other in religions and stuff like that and the fault lines of race, all these things I've talked about. So number one, we need to... Um, grow up, start to become adult, and start to realize that these fictitious, fake fault lines of division do not have to be there. We allow them to be there, and if we go on judging people uh, and uh, uh, dividing with other people on the basis of race, religion, income bracket, uh, culture, uh, age bracket, whatever, then America, the world in general, but we're talking about America here, is going to be divided and ruled into a fascist dictatorship within a short number of years. Um, if we can grow up enough to stop fighting with each other over these irrelevant differences and unite behind the thing that affects us all and also affects our children and grandchildren which is basic freedom and basic rights uh, to, to live our lives as we see fit without imposition by the state um, then we start, in, we start in to get a chance because this whole system can only operate and can only function with the cooperation of the, p the people in general. He can't function otherwise. Okay, um, Obama um, s stands up outside the White House on day one and said, okay, we're going to do this. But what if the American people in, in, in vast numbers say we're not doing that? There is no power. Obama has no power except the power the, the people give to him and, and, and people in other countries give to their, quote, leaders um, uh, every day. And, and I'm a great believer in the, uh, the Gandhian uh, uh, approach of, of non-violent, um, non-cooperation with the systems that control and impose themselves upon us. We don't have to 
um, accept this. We don't have to um, have people, uh, for instance, um, having their homes uh, foreclosed and repossessed when uh, they, they can't pay their mortgages for no fault of their own. You know, why aren't thousands of people um, uh, getting together to, to, to um, form groups that will not allow people to have their homes foreclosed, that won't allow the people in to do it? There's thousands and millions of us. There's a handful of these people that are knocking on the door and saying, we're taking your house away. Why um, um, are we not, uh, are, we, are, we, are people going so, so uh, lamely and allowing this stuff when, when the power is within the people? Why? Fear of the consequences of challenging the state. And, well, it's not my house being foreclosed, so it's not my problem. Um, it, freedom is everybody's problem. As that uh, pastor said in Nazi Germany, First they came for the Jews, and I was not a Jew, so I did nothing. Then I, they came for the trade unionists, and I was not a trade unionist, so I did nothing. Then they came for the communists, and I was not a communist, so I did nothing. Then they came for me, and there was no one left to speak out for me. This is what they're doing now, Rebecca. They're picking off different levels of society, one by one, and the other groups in society are saying, well, it's not my problem. Well, it is our problem. And when we start to realize that, and we come together in the numbers that we, that we have um, to stop cooperating with this system in infinite ways that we can, the system will not be able to function, and we'll see where the real power is. That's on a physical level. There's many other things we can do as well. But the key level to all of this is consciousness, becoming conscious. And this is um, the way my, my life, um, uh, since I started to wake up myself uh, 20 years ago, my life has been through some very clear phases of incredible synchronicity where I'm being taken to information and taken to situations so I understand how it works. First of all, I had years um, of understanding through incredible synchronicity around the world um, how the structure works that controls people, if you like, in the physical realm, in the everyday world we experience. Then I realized that there were other dimensional um, uh, levels to this, which I also went into, uh, again, uh, uh, synchronistically the information came to me. But over the last, like, two, two years, and so massively now, um, the whole m movement and synchronicity of my life is all going into the nature of reality and what this reality is that we're experiencing. And um, what you realize um, is that what we call the physical world is, in effect, a projection it's like uh, it's a three-dimensional, illusory three-dimensional projection, but it's like a projection on a movie screen. And by the time it hits the physical world, the one we uh, experience uh, uh, all the time, um, the deal's done. It's, it's already a, a done deal, just as the, the movie is when it hits the screen. It really is a no good um, uh, standing by the screen, screaming at the movie screen, and, and demanding that it changes, because by then, it ain't, ain't going to change. You've got to get back to the projection room and see where it's being projected from and change the real. And it's being projected out of what we call, um, and psychologists call, the... Um, collective unconscious mind. That's what's projecting it. And, and that's where we, we need to become conscious. And we need to get out of what we call mind, because mind is the program and is the, the movie that we're experiencing. Mind is a very, very low level of, of awareness. It's, it's childlike, computer-like. That's why people who are in mind, which is the vast majority of people on the planet, because the whole system is designed to put you in mind from the first time you start uh, uh, entering this world as a child. Um, be, uh, it, because it's um, a computer-like in its nature, very much along the lines of that portrayed in the Matrix movies, um, you get people who are in mind who are incredibly predictable. This is one great reason, Rebecca, why these guys can manipulate vast numbers of people, because they know that if they can hold them in a state of mind, as opposed to true consciousness, then they can pretty well predict that if you put in data here, problem, um, you're going to get reaction out here um, at the end of it. Um, and, and, and this is why you, you 
all over the world, you see this. And I, you know, I've been to so many countries and experienced so many different cultures. Wherever you go, if you put a certain uh, situation in, like we call it, you call it data, if you like, um, you're going to get the same reaction. I don't care if they're black, white, or sky blue, pink, or Hindus, Jews, or, or, or Christians, or Muslims, or whatever. You get the same reaction, basically. Why? Because they're in mind, and they're in the same computer program. When we become conscious, which uh, symbolically is moving into the heart rather than the, rather than the head and coming from a, a point of view of, 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 of feeling, coming from the point of view of intuition, knowing rather than just thinking, then you can start to see through the program. You can start to see what mind cannot see because mind is part of the program. Try telling this uh, computer um, sitting in front of me um, uh, something that, that, that is um, uh, uh, about consciousness and coming from a level of consciousness. It, it can't do it. It's a computer. It just reacts to data. That's what mind does. So we, we, we've got to start getting out of mind and into consciousness. And we do that by... Um, well, basically, the, 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 the process that I've um, gone through uh, and I see so many other people going through, it, it goes like this. The first key um, point, the most important thing, is to have an intent that you want to get out of mind and into consciousness. That intent um, is an incredibly powerful energy if you really mean it. And what then starts to happen is that energy of intent, it's like a magnetic energy, like, like all energy is, um, gets projected by your intent and it draws to it other energy fields, people, places, ways of life, experiences, synchronicity that draw to you what you need in terms of experience, information uh, and, and other things to break out of mind into true consciousness. Um, and uh, what happens to a lot of people is when they make this intent um, and, 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 and this process starts, they, they look at some of the things that come towards them, which are people they often don't like, that give them very challenging experiences. Um, maybe their relationship ends, maybe they lose their job, whatever. Um, and they think it's, it's a real negative um, thing, that's a negative thing that's happened to them um, as, as a result of, of, of trying to become conscious. But what is happening? What's happening is that energy of intent is drawing towards you what you need to break the programs that enslave you in mind. And sometimes these are um, situations where you lose your job. Now, you'll, now the status quo is not an option. There's a, you've, got, you've got to have movement in your life because of what's just happened, and that movement will start to take you in another direction. Some people might come into your life that are very unpleasant and give you great challenging experiences, but what they're doing is they're bringing to the surface many of the things and the emotional uh, 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 programs, the fear programs, which you can then face because they're putting them in your face by, by their, what they're doing, and you can, you can break them. All these things have been happening to me over 20 years um, in, 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 in uh, coordination with this information that I've been uncovering. It's been a personal journey as well as a, uh, a, a, a collective journey, a, a researching journey, if you like. And, and what happens as you... Uh, break these programs, these mind programs, the energetic fields that you're starting to project um, change in their vibrational state. And so they stop drawing towards you uh, in what you call your life and daily experiences, the same people, situations, and uh, all the rest of it. Instead of that, new people come into your life, new experiences, new directions, and these directions take you um, in, in, in the, um, in, 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 down the road towards consciousness uh, and, and towards breaking up these mind programs. And as this starts to happen, you start to see the mind program that you were in before and therefore couldn't see. And you go, it's so obvious, why didn't I see it? Oh Why? my gosh, David! That you is were so in awesome. the program. I, you so were awesome. in the program. Now you're out of it. Um, you're in it physically. You're in this world physically, but now you're not of it in terms of the point you're observing it from. And and that's the change that needs to take place. And it's taking place in vast numbers of people. Vast numbers of people worldwide.
And what I want to do here now is we need to take a break. Um, we're at the top of the hour, and when we come back, we're going to have some other affiliates join us. And I want to continue this because this kind of gets along with some of the other things that we talked about prior uh, to you coming on to the show today, what we wanted to cover. So for the rest of you, sit back and enjoy, and we'll be back in just a moment. All right, everyone, welcome back. And for those of you who are just joining us, we are here visiting with David Icke today. Um, and please understand that the first hour will be available tomorrow. It will be up uh, on the archives. They're free of charge. Just go ahead and go to the website, journeyswithrebecca.com, so you can listen to the entire message that David has for us today. Um, David, we left off in the uh, last hour here uh, talking uh, wow we've just moved in from uh, one thing into the other which is uh, I like what you said get out of mind and into consciousness you know and and it's it's very funny because you were talking not funny in a haha way but um, similar experiences I've been going through myself in and just um, Looking at the world and going, you know, everything just seems kind of surreal. I have many, many more days like uh, that than it ever used oh, to yes. be. You just kind of drive down the road going, why am I even doing this? This is just oh, yes. you know, not even needed. <laughs> or, you know, it's just all these these things that come in, you know, as you're, as you're experiencing this and you're going through. And it can be a little confusing. And believe it or not, I've had other people that have shared the same thing with me. So this is right along the lines of what people now can put into some kind of thought process of okay now I have a better understanding of what I'm experiencing because somewhere along the way they've had that intent to get out of mind and into consciousness and that being said you know this this whole thing like you said is is you know when I first watched believe it or not the Matrix movie I just I got done and I went oh my god I think that is more true than what anybody even understands uh huh because and, and it may not be identical but I I think it's very very interesting because one of the other things too David is is that there's a lot of things that have been presented to us right in our face and we all think of it as sci-fi or fantasy or whatever but what's the best way to hide the truth is to put it exactly. in front of people. Yeah, exactly. If, if, you t- if, you take, um, if you take the Matrix and the Matrix movies to be mind and those outside of the Matrix to be consciousness, that's a, quite a good analogy of the way the whole thing works. It, it wasn't, they didn't use that analogy in the, in the movies themselves, but if you do use that analogy, it's, it's very close to what we were talking about before the break. So now that gets along to are we now talking about your version of the nature of reality? Would you like to go into that next before we go in and answer some questions for people today? Or what would you like to do with that? Well, um, you know, this direction that my life's been going um, for the last few years, and, and massively so now, I mean, I'm going into some real deep stuff, uh, real pushing the cutting edge forward miles at the moment um, in terms of the subjects that we're talking about in terms of reality and what this what this reality is and how it's how it's created how it's projected um but it, i've become aware over the the last uh, few years since my research has moved on and not just my research but um i've had like uh, a little bit of information and suddenly it's uh, it's triggered a, an awareness that's just o- overpowered me and, and oh god yes i can see it now that's how it is and what that is it's it's the memory coming back because we all know this stuff but we are locked into um, a fraction of our consciousness which we call the conscious mind and therefore we're not aware of the vast uh, enormous uh, amount of information and awareness that we have uh, in a non-conscious state anyway um, and I began to realize that the internet is very very um, similar in theme to this reality um, and the, the what we call um, the physical body is actually a computer uh, a very very sophisticated holographic computer um, and not just a computer like the one on the desk in front of me now which um, I have to put data in and then it reacts to it right. um, as, as, as it's programmed to react to it um, but also it has the ability in terms of the, the body um, to be what, what they call biological computers in other words they don't just react to data they can assess it and make decisions on it that's what we call evolution you see evolution of the body um, the, the body computer um, is taking in information from its environment all the time and it is reacting to that um, information and changing uh, in 
terms of that information. A very simple example is the way the immune system works and reacts to events and the way the body uh, changes its temperature um, when it goes into a cold place or whether it goes into a warm place. It's all the time reacting to the environment because it's a computer and it's a, a highly advanced one and it's, um, it's created to do that. Um, and if you do not um, impose consciousness upon the computer, i.e. if you don't have a computer operator, then the computer will run itself. And this is what I, I, I have seen more and more, the more I have awakened and the more I've become uh, conscious, that um, the vast, vast numbers of people on this planet are in computer mode. The, conscious, the consciousness uh, level of them is not um, taking, a part, uh, taking part in the decision-making process. The computer's running the show. And that's why people are so unbelievably predictable. When psychologists say they can break down human personalities into 12 archetypes and combinations of them, but you can't do that with consciousness, which is all possibility but you can do it with computer programs, and that's what they're, they're, they're assessing, the computer level of reality. Now, if you, if you fall into that and you, you run your life in computer reality, then those in the shadows, beyond the Obamas and beyond the Bushes, the ones ultimately controlling those uh, people, um, they understand that it's a computer reality. And therefore, they um, can uh, uh, know that if they put certain data in, i.e. world events or situations, credit countries, whatever, they're going to get a certain reaction from the computer, um, uh, the computer level of, of um, perception. For instance, um, part of the computer uh, program is um, a reaction mechanism that we call fight or flight, um, which is that when you face danger, you either hit the guy or run. Right. Well, actually, if you're in consciousness, there are other possibilities <laughs> to slug in the guy or, or leg in it. Right. But not to the computer level of reality in fight or flight, which is what most people uh, react with. So this is just an example of what I'm talking about. Um, and therefore, um, what the computer is doing is because the, if, you, if you look at the, the makeup, well, the makeup of the planet, never mind the, the makeup of the human body, it is, it is a crystalline structure. It's crystal. It's a crystal. And um, every uh, membrane of every cell, and we have trillions of them, is a crystalline substance, right? So um, and DNA is crystalline. So what do, do, do they use to, uh, in uh, transmission receiving in uh, broadcast technology, etc., uh, of all kinds? Crystals, um, uh, the, the crystal chip, uh, the silicon chip, and all the rest of it. Um, and so what the, uh, the body computer is doing is um, picking up um, the projected reality. Just like a television um, in, uh, in, the, 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 um, in the front room uh, picks up a broadcast signal and turns it into pictures on the screen. People say, um, tell me about television. They say, oh, well, it's uh, moving pictures on the screen. Well, yes, it is. But the only place that television exists in that form is on the screen. Everywhere else, it's broadcast uh, uh, vibrational uh, fields and, and electronic circuits, etc. People say, uh, tell me about the internet. Oh, yeah, well, it's websites and it's graphics and it's colors and it's words and it's pictures on, on the screen. Yes, it is. But the only place the, the, the internet exists in that form is on the screen. Everywhere else, it is uh, mathematical codes and electronic circuits, etc. And um, our screen is the body, particularly the brain, which is decoding uh, broadcast frequencies into um, holographic um, pictures, which we perceive to be the solid world around us. Um, now, the reason that uh, quantum physics has uh, found that uh, the idea is that uh, everything physical is made of atoms, but quantum physicists have found that the atoms have no solidity. They're just pockets of energy. So how can um, something that has no solidity make up this apparently solid world? It can't, because the world is not solid. 
it's just an illusion that's decoded in our uh, brain by our body computer from a non-physical uh, frequency field state um, into an apparently um, uh, physical three-dimensional state. Uh, just in, in simple terms, what a computer or a, a television is doing. So, and if no consciousness is involved, um, to uh, take a step back and, 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 and uh, look at this from a, another perspective, then the computer just goes on decoding the, what I call the cosmic internet, and that's what people, vast majority of people, call life. Um, they're just programs following the program, uh, just like the woman in the red dress in um, the Matrix movie that was a digital um, insert into the program that looked as human as you and me. Now, once you start to get conscious, you start to see the program. And when you see the program, then we can start doing something about it. And, and so this awakening... Um, uh, which is absolutely happening as people are now more and more becoming more conscious. That's because that's what's happening when they start to see uh, the program and the world for what it is, rather than they thought what they thought it was when they were in it and of it. And um, when I started on this journey um, nearly 40 years ago, um, which started before this, but one key moment in the very very early days was I went to see a psychic lady. Um, because I was feeling a presence around me um, wherever I went and when I was in a room alone it always felt as if there was someone there and I went to see a psychic lady not telling her anything about this just to see if she would pick up what the heck was happening around me and she went into psychic mode in 1990 in March 1990 and started telling me that um, I was going to go out on a world stage and um, eventually be quote world famous uh, putting out um, great secrets um, uh, and, and that I would write books and, 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 and all this stuff, which I thought was, you know, come on, I, you know, you're having a laugh. You know, I, I'm a television presenter. Leave me alone. What's going on? Uh, but it's all kind of happened. Now, the reason I tell that story is that another thing that was given to me at that time through the psychic was there is going to be a spiritual revolution in his lifetime um, because, in effect, a vibrational change is coming which is going to wake people up and act like a spiritual alarm clock and wake people up from their amnesia. The amnesia is being caught in the mind program. Um, and um, my first book, which, uh, as a result of those experiences, which I, I, I wrote in uh, 1990 and was published in 1991, was called Truth Vibrations. And it was called Truth Vibrations because I was talking about this vibrational change that was coming. Now, there seemed no sign of it at the time, but um, having travelled uh, to nearly 50 countries in the last uh, 20 years, uh, and more and more so now, I'm, I'm seeing it ever more uh, blatantly, uh, there is an awakening. It's not the majority, it's not anything like the majority yet, but it is an increasingly vast number of people. And what that process is, is people helped by this vibrational change are becoming conscious. The mind program, the concrete program, is breaking down. And what that means is, because consciousness is starting to um, become part of the um, perception process, the way the body computer uh, decodes reality now has another level of input, another level of perception, another input into that decoding process, and thus what we're perceiving from the decoding process is changing. We're seeing things we didn't see before because consciousness is now, in, now allowing us to see. Um, and and it, we are in this such a fantastic time where, yes, you know, we've got all these um, things going on with the, uh, the program trying to um, uh, control us more and more to protect itself from this awakening. Um, and th because of the nature of the, the program dominates the, the mainstream media, we're seeing the program uh, events and the program unfolding uh, all the time on the television news and in the newspapers and in our daily lives, but not in the media um, because they, they wouldn't understand it if it bit them on the backside, um, most mainstream journalists, the vast majority, is this awakening that's going on quietly out of the public domain, most of it, um, which is becoming and teasing people awake. And so um, we're, we're in a fantastic uh, time um, of uh, 
enormous uh, interest uh, in terms of uh, what's happening, an enormous potential for true change, not Obama's change, but true change from a mind controlled, a mind programmed world to a conscious world in which in a conscious world you don't need laws to say you will not murder. Mind needs that because it's stupid. Consciousness doesn't, would not even think of harming another human being because um, it understands that we're all one. We're all expressions of one consciousness. To hurt another is to hurt yourself. It's ridiculous. Uh, consciousness can see that. You don't need laws to say you, you can't um, harm the environment. Um, mind needs that because it's stupid. Consciousness wouldn't dream of harming the planet because the planet is part of the oneness too. And, and so it's a complete uh, transformation of perception which by definition will transform uh, the um, experienced world that, 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 that we, um, we come here to experience. Um, so there are many really wonderful things going on and we're getting closer and closer to understanding um, how this, this reality is generated and therefore how we can generate a different reality. Um, and, and as well as the, the unpleasant things which uh, Obama and people like that represent. Well, and I have to tell you, David, that, uh, I, that this this energy that you talk about, it's a vibrational shift. And uh -huh. interestingly enough, is I, I, first of all, I agree with you 150% on that, um, th that me more and more people are, are coming out saying, gosh, I, I feel like... You know, time is changing. Like things that you know, my senses are different, and like it's speeding up. Like I feel like I'm vibrating sometimes. I mean, all of these comments that I get from people, um, it's just amazing. And you just kind of go, well, that's part of it. There is a, a new energy, if you will, or a new vibration, or certainly um, the whatever you want to call it. Some people call it like a, a veil that's that's kind of been lifted or the blanket, so to speak, has now become just a sheet instead of a heavy blanket and they can sense more about what's going on. And it's it really is. It, it, in all of its ugliness on parts of it, there's also all of this other stuff that's coming in that really it can be changed. Just oh, it can be changed. By honoring those those the vibrational shifts and by recognizing um, that this is very very real these vibrational the consciousness and you know you were talking about people looking at other people there's times David seriously I've looked at people and of course you know your first thought is oh something's wrong with my eyes and I've looked uh -huh. at people and all of a sudden they kind of like um, glitch like like you 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 watch uh, uh, um, um, something in the movies and it glitches you know, yep. you, or it, it like doesn't stay on like your computer will do that. It'll glitch and things get that wavy, strange look to it before it, you know, recaptures itself. I've actually witnessed that in the last couple of years. And your first thought is, wow, that's pretty bizarre. <laughs> yeah, it's but, not but so it's bizarre. not. It, it's, it's only bizarre from the uh, perception of reality that we're given from the cradle to grave by exactly. science science that you know doesn't know its backside from its elbow right um, but um, the, what you're talking about I, I, I see myself and, and I hear other people's experiences all over the world um, and the thing about time is interesting you know when people say there is no time and, and people think well you know just, just excuse me why I just appear up my bum trying to understand that what do you mean there's no time of course there is there was yesterday and there's now and there's today no um, there's only present there's only the present, what, we, what you might call the present, right. um, because we're decoding the program at that present time, right? Um, and, and as we decode the program and um, a sequence of events unfolds as a, as a um, result of us decoding the program, um, it appears, because one sequence follows another, that there is a movement into the future. There isn't. We're just decoding the program present time. Um, and uh, the, the idea of um, past, present, and future is illusory. And it, it's an illusion of the time track, of the matrix. Um, once you move into um, uh, consciousness, um, then by definition, because of the process I talked about a few minutes ago, where consciousness now starts to affect the um, 
the way that we decode reality, decode the program, by definition, because time, the time illusion is part of the program, uh, our perception of time and our interaction with what we call time is going to change. It's got to, because we're not decoding time like other people are decoding time who are still, who are still you know, you know slam-bang uh, in the program. So when Einstein made the point that um, if you, uh, I'm paraphrasing him here, but if you put your... Um, uh, finger into a, uh, a saucepan of boiling water, time seems to pass very slowly. And if you're in the company of a beautiful woman, as he put it, then time seems to um, pass very fast. Because time doesn't exist. It's only our relationship to a perception of something we call time, which is a sequence of events. And um, something we, we'd like to be over tends to uh, seem to, you know, Take drag a long on. time. Yeah. yeah. Drag on. Something we're enjoying seems to go quickly because it's a different relationship to time in the experience that we're having, and therefore the state of consciousness we're in at the time we're having these different experiences. Um, so um, our relationship to what we call time is absolutely going to change. I'll tell you what, we've seen nothing yet. Um, and uh, it's, um, it's important that we get this information out because then when people experience these things they're not so frightened because they, they have an understanding of what's going on and it's not it's not a bad thing it's a great thing it's setting us free wonderful wonderful time and you know it's interesting you know that these you, you realize that uh, you can see the same thing from different perspectives and they appear to be at odds with each other but both are true it's just the perspective from which you're, which you're looking at it from. And so we can see the collapse of the money system and the collapse of the system in general, which they are instigating. We can see that on one level as a, a real bad thing because it's manipulating um, uh, uh, and taking away what we have believed to be our security and our sense of security. But let's go back a little while to what I was saying earlier. When you put out an intent um, that you want to change, that you want to become conscious, then what happens is that vast um, uh, changes take place in your life often, depending on the power of your intent, um, because that energy of intent draws to you uh, the experiences and the people and the situations you need to break the enslavement of mind and enter consciousness, right? Now, collectively, if you want to look at it from another perspective, which is just as as uh, uh, as, mu as much validity as, as the other one, you can see the collapse of the financial system and the collapse of the system that we uh, have seen as our security, actually our enslavement, if we only realised, uh, as 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 a collective version of that individual experience that I was talking about just now, the the collective. Uh, projection is changing, the, the uh, collective um, energetic state is changing, and therefore um, the old uh, construct that the old uh, energetic state was creating and holding together, what we call the system, um, is now withdrawing that um, cement to hold it together because vibrationally it's changing and it's no longer sinking with the system and so what what can happen to the system what must happen to the system it must collapse because um, a new energy is go is creating a new construct of reality and what we're looking at um, at this time is um, the you know um, when you have a dam and it's holding back water. Um, if you uh, leave it alone, then the water will be calm and just sit there and that's fine. Um, but over a period of time, the dam starts to get um, undermined. It starts to become less and less um, uh, uh, solid and together. Now that period takes a very, very, very long time. Eventually, you see cracks appear. Now, once the cracks start to appear, it can be a very short time before the whole dam collapses. 
And what happens when the dam collapses is the water cascades down the valley. It's in total chaos and, con and, and confusion, or apparently so, until eventually the water finds um, calmness and balance again, harmony, in the new situation that it's found itself in. Um, a new reality. We are now, symbolically, in that point where the dam is bursting and that water is starting to start starting to cascade and as uh, and we're therefore in short we're in that period of confusion and chaos as the old breaks down so the new can emerge and if we hold that thought or hold that awareness then some of the things that are going to happen as this soul system collapses um, are not going to be as frightening. In fact, we can start on one level at least to welcome them because we have the understanding that what has been enslaving us, we're actually watching collapse so that the new, the conscious world can emerge from that um, transition. Uh, so on one level, yes, I'm, I, I'm been uh, exposing the manipulation and the stuff for 20 years and I'll still do it because people need to know about it but there, there, are, there are these all these other very very positive elements to what's going on if you see them from another perspective right and we talked about that and uh, before the beginning of the show David and, and when what I'd like to do now is to I know that you're still doing some refinement you still have some other information that you're gathering but I would absolutely be delighted to have you come back and talk about um, that aspect of it at a later time. I know you're going to be traveling a lot here yeah. in the, uh, over the next few months. And we're going to get into all of that here in just a little bit. But um, I, I'm, you know, it's just absolutely, I cannot tell you what a delight this is, is, is the information that you're sharing with people. I can hear it literally click into a lot of people. And this is what's going to make it fabulous. It really is. And your words are so important. Your information is so important. And they need to keep hearing this over and over again to break that cycle of programming that is going on and that is, you know, still going to continue. And But the, the point is, is that we all have uh, an opportunity here. And this is a very delightful time, an auspicious time uh, to be here at this time in order to create what I like to call a new paradigm. And mm -hmm. of what it really could be for all of us. And wouldn't that just be delightful? To live how we were supposed to live. Yeah, I, I, you know, the, the point that consciousness comes from is all possibility. Yes. You know, there's this great line in the Matrix, first Matrix movie where the Morpheus character, and again I'm para paraphrasing, um, says to the Neo character about the agents, they can do this and they can do that and you can um, uh, unleash whole, uh, you know, guns full of bullets at them and, 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 and not even get close to hitting them because they're so fast. But then he says, but they still live in a world based on rules and therefore they can never be as fast as you can be. Uh, because Neo was symbolic, which of course was a, a, a you know, move the letters around and it was uh, one, um, the oneness. Um, Neo was symbolic of consciousness. Um, if you, the, way, the way I look at the movie anyway, and you know, people will have different symbols because there's lots of ways, ways of looking at the Matrix movies, but from my point of view, Neo was consciousness. And because he was consciousness, he was able to um, operate in a world that wasn't based on rules. Um, and the, 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 the Matrix world, the mind world, what is it all about? It's all about rules and regulations. And what are rules and regulations? They're limitations. So we live in a world in which from cradle to grave we are fed the mantra, the mind control program called limitation. You can't. That's not possible. All the rest of it. Um, and once you enter consciousness, anything becomes possible because you realize that this world is a projection. It's not solid. Um, it's a projection, and the projection can be changed, and therefore what we call miracles are not miracles at all. They're just changing the projection. <laughs> I love it. It's, I love it. You know. I love I it. Mean, I mean, please. And, and, and what um, 
the, the, where I'm going now, and I'm not really going to be able to talk about this at length for maybe another year, but where I'm going now, where life's taking me, is the most incredible um, places beyond this reality. Um, uh, to understand this, and, and you know, I've been saying for years, and, and the, the more that I understand, the more I know it's true. When we finally understand what this reality is and um, where it's coming from and what's projecting it, we are going to laugh for weeks <laughs> when we, when we, re when we pers uh, ponder on how we thought it was and how we interacted with it before. Um, you know, uh, it, it, yeah. <laughs> There are many. Yeah. There, there are many people in the world that I. The would grand rather, epiphany. I would not. Ra I would rather not be. But yeah. right up there at the top of the Premier League are these guys behind the manipulation. I feel sorry for them because there's a tidal wave of energy coming. It's going to wash them away, and one day they'll become conscious. Um, but it will, be, it will be more of a challenge for them because they've got um, such a greater uh, a chasm to, to, to leap, but they'll become conscious. Everyone will become conscious eventually, and then we'll, uh, we'll realize um, there, isn't, there are no limitations um, in, in terms of what we can do. Anything's possible. It's just, it's just a manifestation of consciousness. You know, okay, uh, everybody uh, you know, who's listening, uh, just, just think of something now. Think of a blue car. You've created it. And, and if you know what you're doing, you can manifest it, because it's a projection. And, and it, you just take it from the, uh, the, the um, subconscious world, what we call the subconscious realm, and you project it into the um, uh, holographic realm, we call the five sense world, and suddenly it's a blue car. I mean, <laughs> the idea of scarcity, the idea of, of some must have therefore some must not have, is bloody nonsense. It's just um, the way the program wants us to see the world, so you to, for some to have, some must have not. Abundance is um, just a new understanding of way. Um, when we, we, we drop the limitations and the chains of um, the idea of scarcity, um, and, and we start to know that abundance is, is just a projection away. Um, it's, a, it's a wonderful time to be alive. I wouldn't want to be anywhere else than anyone else doing anything else than me doing here, this and being here now. Oh, that is absolutely fabulous. And I love what you're saying. And I, I believe what you're saying. And I know I should say what you're saying. And I hope that the people that are out there listening will grasp a hold of that and start reaching for that for themselves. In the meantime, David, we have to take a short break. When we come back, okay. are you ready for some questions now? Yep. No All problem. right, you guys, for the rest of you, hang on. We're going to be right back with more Journeys with Rebecca and David Icke right after this. All right, everyone, welcome back. And you are listening to Journeys with Rebecca, and we are here with my very special guest, David Icke. And again, his website is davidike.com. Please go check it out because there's a wealth of information there. Um, well, David, um, you know, you talked about um, our perception of time and how, you know, like a lot of people at work, it seems like their day just keeps dragging on and on and on. But maybe when they get home from work and they might be visiting with friends or whatever, all of a sudden it's like time to go to bed. And yep. time goes by really fast. And that's the way this has been with me and you today. I It just went by extraordinarily fast. But we do have some questions that the audience um, did write in. And I have four of them here. And if you would, I would like to go ahead and present those to you right now. Okay. Okay, now this first one is from Barbara. And she writes this. It's as though our planet is being systematically changed into a more habitable place for another race and less habitable for humans and animals. The race that is taking over the planet Earth must not need air to breathe, chemtrails, air pollution, or food to eat, GMO, brand foods, pesticides, herbicides. Everything that they are doing will harm the human body, but it must be something they will be able to thrive in. Are we being squeezed off the planet? I think there's a, a, a lot of truth in that in terms of the, um, the ambition and the agenda. Um, as I was saying earlier, uh, 
when I started off on this journey 20 years ago, or consciously started on it anyway, I've been on it all my life when I look back, um, I, um, I first of all was taken synchronistically through all the, the five sense level of it and the human level of it and all the rest of it. And, and then I started to uh, realize, and the whole synchronicity of my life was taking me in this direction very fast at that time, that there was actually a, a, a non-human element to this um, whole story. But I emphasize again, this non-human element um, is still part of the projection. It's not the projector. It's not projecting this reality. It is um, a part of the projection, another level of the program. And um, so I started going back to find a time when this human structure of um, control began. And you can go back and back and back and back, but you, you know, I got comfortably back to the time of the Crusades and the uh, 1200s, etc. Um, the, the creation of secret societies like the Knights Templar and the Knights of Malta, as they're now known. Um, and I kept going back, and I'm eventually thousands of years BC, and you start to pick up a theme all around the world, not just in one place, although ancient Sumer and Babylon, which is now, of course, Iraq. Mesopotamia seems to be a really, really significant place in relation to this. Um, and you pick up the accounts all over the world of an interbreeding between a non-human and a human uh, race to create a hybrid bloodline. And um, not always, but uh, there's a very, very significant um, theme of a reptilian non-human race, um, uh, which you find, like I say, all over the world. And uh, what I've begun to understand is that this reptilian uh, element, although they, they, they do exist in, in the five sense world, which we decode in this tiny frequency range we call visible light, which is a tiny frequency range that um, our eyes can access in terms of what we can see. But outside of that is, is inf infinite numbers of other um, uh, dimensions of um, reality and just outside of visible light i.e. just outside the frequency that we can see um, these uh, uh, reptilian entities the key ones uh, in terms of the manipulation um, um, exist um, but because they're vibrating um, to a different resonance to uh, visible light they can't interact with this world directly um, so they um, have created um, hybrid bloodlines which are um, in, in part human but also to a very large degree um, reptilian and you know people hearing this for the first time will go oh, oh, oh hold on a second that's ridiculous but, it, but hold on um, we have massive reptilian genetics in every human body um, the oldest part of the human brain is called the R complex the reptilian brain and that's where we get fight or flight from fully enough and that's where we get um, uh, uh, all these survival mechanisms from and when you think about it you know um, uh, if you can put people in a state of survival mode, you're locking them into the reptilian brain because that's where the survival process and reactions come from. And, and there's a big uh, uh, relevance in that, I would suggest. Um, and uh, you have a credit crunch, you're in survival mode, okay? You're in the reptilian brain. Fight or flight. What right. am I going to do? Panic. Yeah, so this, this is war, same thing. Um, and um, so. What I'm talking about with these hybrid bloodlines is there is a greater infusion of reptilian genetics in them than there is in the general population. And what this does, because in the end we see a physical body, but what we're looking at actually is a vibrational field, which we're decoding into what appears to be solid, but as physics has shown, is not. And because, therefore, um, there is a greater reptilian genetics, there is a greater vibrational compatibility between these particular hybrid bloodlines and these reptilian entities operating just outside of human sight. As a result, they can, quote, possess the mental and emotional faculties of these particular bloodlines um, much more powerfully and completely than they can with the general population. So when, we, when I talk about the Illuminati bloodlines, I'm actually talking about these hybrid bloodlines which have a much greater vibrational compatibility with the reptilian entities just outside of human sight, thus become perfect vehicles for those um, entities to manipulate this world while appearing to our five-sense sight to be human. So we look at 
the Bush family, we look at uh, the British royal family, we look at the Rothschilds and the, the Rockefellers and all these bloodline families. And because we're decoding um, through our computer um, the five sense level of reality, the visible light, we see their human level. But if we could see beyond that, if we could tease out our um, visual frequency range, we would see uh, any, uh, an entity that was anything but human overshadowing those people. Um, and uh, it's interesting, I um, got a friend who's um, uh, very much into the scientific community, and um, he has an uh, associate who is uh, not into my stuff at all, uh, probably knows nothing about it. He is a scientist who, and I don't agree with what he's doing, but uh, he's a scientist that's been doing a um, a research project um, to develop um, iris scanning technology for airports and stuff like that, you know. And what this and what this has done it, 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 in in his last project, it um, led him to under uh, you know magnification, um, looking at two thousand three hundred pairs of eyes, and he told uh, my friend again not because my friend knew me, he, he, and the, the reptilian connection that I'm writing about, he said he reckoned that about 4% of the eyes that he looked at were of, quote, reptilian type. Um, and I think 4% is, is, is not a bad percentage uh, of, of actually uh, uh, th this, this bloodline. Um, and the more it interbreeds with itself, the, 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 from their point of view, the more pure it is, uh, the, and by pure, I mean the more vibrationally compatible it is with the possessing entity. So um, th this world is manipulated, um, it seems very clear, um, um, by non-human entities working through human, f human bodies, human hybrid bodies, which um, we decode as human and therefore we think, you know, it's ridiculous that what the Ike, uh, Ike fella is saying. But uh, when you see the bigger picture, it starts to uh, make logical um, sense. And they are um, manipulating this world to, to fit themselves. And it, maybe it is the fact that they're trying to change it in a way that they can then occupy it. But um, it's the program. It's still the program playing out. They're not all powerful. They're not um, uh, the source in the end of the control, the program is, and they're as much part of the program, therefore subject to the control, as anyone else is. And they're completely bloody non-conscious, they are, so they are absolutely computer programs. And funnily enough, I've got a great friend in South Africa, a Zulu shaman called Krader Mutwo, I talked to the other day on the phone, and um, when I spoke in South Africa um, in the late 90s for the first time, um, he contacted me. Um, through a third party and said, I've got to meet you, I've got to meet you. So I went to see him and um, he said to me, um, he just read my book, um, The Biggest Secret, where I introduced the reptilian um, part of it for the first time. And he said to me, Mr. David, Mr. David, um, uh, how do you know about the Chittahuri? And I said, I don't. Who are the Chittahuri? <laughs> and he said, the Chittahuri um, translates in, um, in the Zulu as children of the serpent or children of the python. And uh, the reptilian um, race manipulating humanity is fundamental in the uh, history, the true history, the uh, hidden history, the underground um, shamanistic history of Africa. Um, and he said to me, um, if you want to understand the Illuminati, study the reptile. And it's interesting because I did do that. Um, I went to um, reptile farms and um, alligator farms and crocodile farms um, and, and you see a, a, a something very very interesting I saw one um, uh, exhibition if you, uh, if you like of um, crocodile behavior where the guy was actually in the compound while the, you know, the public were on the outside listening to him and he had a stick in his hand and he went over and there was this massive crocodile in this shallow water and he went through a sequence where he said, I'm going to do this, and the crocodile will do this in response. Right? And he did it. One thing, two things, three things, four things, five things. And everything he did, the crocodile reacted in exactly the same way that the guy said it would react, because it did it every time. Now, what else do we know that reacts the same every time you do the same thing? A computer. 
And it seems to me that reptilian genetics are more computer-like in, in, in their decoding of the program than, than even human genetics. Um, and uh, the Illuminati, when you study them, are incredibly predictable um, and um, very callable in the way that they, they act because they are so computer-like. And, and it's one reason why they are very impressive in terms of their intellect and the way that they manipulate the system. Um, because they're so computer-like. I mean, computers uh, can do not more than consciousness, but they can do more than mind uh, can in terms of working things out and seeing things and assessing things uh, and doing mathematics and all the rest of it. Um, and in the same way, these um, reptilian bloodlines, uh, the, the, the top notch of them anyway, are very good at that. But this is, this is another thing. What's happened is the computer is clever. So cleverness intellect, the computer mind, has become something to worship within this reality. He's got a great mind. Oh, he's so intellectual. But, you know, wh when I talk to intellectuals about the stuff we've been talking about today, I have to put it in baby steps, which I don't have to put it in when I'm talking to people who are more awake. But to an intellectual, I, t I spoke at Oxford University uh, um, the Oxford Union, the famous debating society at the Oxford University a few months ago, and I had to put my presentation in baby steps so these people would get it, and these were the so-called elite students. Why? Because they're stuck in mind, and they have developed their mind, um, uh, which is what exam passing and stuff is all about, um, and therefore they've become more entrapped in mind than the general population. The irony is um, not lost. And the thing is that cleverness, mind, without wisdom, consciousness, is the most destructive force on earth. And it's because the program is dominated by cleverness and not wisdom that we have the world that we have. It's very clever to know how to create an atomic bomb. It's not wise to do so, however. Um, and, and this is the difference. And this is what happens when um, mind is replaced by consciousness. Cleverness is replaced by wisdom, which is both clever in terms of its uh, uh, knowledge, but also wise in its use of knowledge. And so these reptilian entities are absolutely locked into mind and they're computer-like. And um, I, when I was in a uh, another uh, state of consciousness um, a few years ago and this female voice was talking to me as loud as mine is now for five hours about the nature of reality one of the things it said to me was if you were a computer and you were programmed to abuse children would you have any problem with that? No, of course I wouldn't because as a computer I would just play out the program and so, so these um, computer-like reptilian bloodlines, reptilian hybrid bloodlines and reptilian control bloodlines are computer-like and therefore they have no empathy with the consequences of others for their actions. So um, when we look at um, pepper bombing Baghdad, we are horrified. They have no emotional consequence for slaughtering hundreds of thousands of Iraqi civilians and children. 3,000 people on 9-11, no problem. No emotional consequence because of no empathy. Um, and and this, this is what we need to understand because, as, as I say to people, if you judge what these guys will do on the basis of what you would do, you've lost the plot. Exactly. Exactly. I agree. Um, we have three more questions, and we're just about out of time. So okay, I'll be quick. Okay, so <laughs> this one this one kind of goes along with what you were just talking about. Um, this is from Brian, and he asked if you still believe that the Illuminati system of control will come crashing down, and if so, can you give us an example of how this will happen? Well. Um I think it will come down. I, I know it will come down, um, but um, it's going to go along the road of um, uh, moving forward, or apparently so, for a while yet. Um, but it will come down when people become conscious on, uh, uh, um, in terms of uh, numbers that will bring it down, because being, being unconscious is what's holding it together. 
Exactly. Once 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 you get out of mind, we 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 drop that state of consciousness or lack of it, which is holding it together. So that that's how it will come down because it's just an energetic construct. Exactly. It's not. It's that's all it is. When the energetic uh, vibration that is holding it together um, changes to a higher state of consciousness, a higher vibration, its previous manifestation, i.e., the construct, the control system will collapse because the energy holding it together will have gone. Um, um, take the cement out of a building, it's going to fall down. And um, so, so that's how it's going to come about. Now, the question is, um, when? It's already happening right. um, in terms of the build-up. The dam is already cracking, but um, the dam is still um, holding the water back. So we're going to see this process of control and uh, seeking to manipulate more control going forward for a while yet. But it's doomed. It's doomed. Um, it's doomed because the energetic state that is holding it together is doomed. There you go. I love that. All right. Next question is really a two-parter. Um, it's a actually pretty easy. Could you comment on Jeb Bush's purported plans to run for the U.S. Senate? And do you foresee any significant revelations to the public regarding Jeb Bush's involvement with and connection to Huffman Aviation, which was the 9-11 flight school in Florida. And this is from J.S. Uh, oh, yes. I mean, that whole Florida flight uh, school system at Venice Airport um, was just a CIA front. Uh, Venice Airport is uh, notorious for running uh, drugs for the CIA. And Mohammed Attar was uh, a drug runner uh, for the CIA. Um, and uh, no way did he orchestrate 9-11. I mean, right. please, you know, intelligent life calling planet Earth here. Right, um, right, right. <laughs> see, um, and, and if, if you look at the, the, the process, the CIA um, have a branch in Pakistan called the um, ISI, the um, Military Intelligence Agency of Pakistan. It's the CIA um, uh, Pakistan branch. Um, and the ISI are fundamentally connected to the Taliban. And what uh, happens in Afghanistan is uh, you've got all the poppy fields, which is, which is then turned into drugs and, and um, through a system which the ISI um, orchestrate and administer and what have you. And, uh, and then a lot of them are shipped to the United States. And it was in um, uh, Florida where Attar was involved in that. So when the, um, if you remember, the um, uh, newspaper in India broke the story after 9-11 that the head of the ISI, um, a, a guy called Ahmed, um, had wired $100,000 to Mohammed Attar. Now, um, Ahmed was actually um, in Washington meeting State Department and uh, CIA officials on 9-11. Just a coincidence, nothing to worry about. Right. Um, and and, and um, what would happen when that um, situation was revealed, surely, is that there would be moves against the guy who wired the money because they were saying, oh, it was part of uh, funding the 9-11 terrorist uh, um, uh, attack. No, it wasn't. It was to do with the running, dr running drugs through... Um, um, through Florida. Um, and uh, Attar's um, girlfriend, uh, when he was living in, um, in Venice, in Florida, has, has, has publicly um, uh, talked about the fact that um, he um, was uh, running drugs in, in the sense that when they, he said the drugs were everywhere. He had loads and loads of money because he was running drugs. Of course he was. And, and, and it, she said whenever they ran out of drugs, um, they would go across to Venice Airport, where these flying schools were that trained the hijackers, and they'd come back with a great mass of drugs. You know, it, it was a drug running operation. And, and what they did was, was use Attar and other um, CIA assets to um, be the four guys, um, to be in the wrong place at the wrong time, to be blamed for it. You know, if you say to Attar, look, I want you here as part of the drug running operation, but you don't know, he doesn't know, that actually being here would um, be part of the cover story for saying he was involved in 9-11. He would know that. Right. And, 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 and this is how the whole thing was constructed. Um, and uh, so those flying schools were fundamentally involved in that. And the, uh, coming back to the question, the uh, Bush family, Father Bush being the, the, the head of it, 
um, is notoriously, again, when among researchers who research this, involved in the drug running operation. And so the Bushes um, uh, are up to their neck in, in endless um, uh, things that, um, as I've said, you know, if, if, if Father Bush... Um, uh, was jailed for all his crimes against humanity, he would have to reincarnate many times to complete the sentence. Um, and so Jeb Bush in Florida, the governor at the time all this was going on, um, of course he, he, he was uh, knowledgeable and aware of that. And um, uh, I'm not surprised that he's, he's saying he's going to run for office and all the rest of it because the Bush family like to be in the positions of um, political influence because it helps them run their, their rackets and, uh, and ser serve the, the bigger agenda that they massively serve. Um, so you have. But, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's, a, it's an age old story with the Bush family. I mean, they were involved fundamentally. Uh, the... Uh, grandfather of the uh, President Boyd Bush, um, uh, Prescott Bush, he was one of the major conduits for funding Hitler. Exactly. Well, we've got two minutes left, and I've got okay. to ask this question because it was uh, from uh, Paul, and it, it says, could it be that this world reality has already happened, that the powers to be are reenacting all the events for some reason, tales from a time loop? And then also he wants to know if you ever heard of the lion shifters and why do they always symbolize Diana with the lion and the moon? You've got about about a minute and a half, David. Ah, well, uh, that, that's a long long story to, to much more than a minute and a half. But um, it, yeah, it's possible because um, this program um, uh, is a bit like um, a DVD. Um, if you um, look at a DVD, you're playing a movie on the television. Um, you uh, watch the movie for a while and what you have watched becomes your past what you're actually watching becomes your perception of the present and what you've yet to watch in the movie becomes your perception of the future but it's all taking place on the same disc at the same time and when the disc um, comes to an end it goes back to the start and place again um, and there may be I think the, the program does change but I think the fundamentals of the program um, um, don't necessarily change that much um, but uh, you know, these are the fascinating areas that I'm going into uh, now. Well, as for Diana, what, yeah. Diana, that's a long story. And I'll tell you what, we'll save that question for the next time that you're on the show, and okay. I'm sure Paul will enjoy that because we can kind of tie that into some of your other things. Um, okay. Can I also say, Rebecca, just very quickly, I'm, I'm coming to America in uh, January, and I'm going to be uh, doing a seven-hour pre presentation at the Conscious Life Expo at the. Uh, Los Angeles uh, or the LA LAX Airport Hilton Hotel um, in Los Angeles and um, that's on the, um, the 16th of February I'm doing the, the Monday or the holiday Monday I'm doing the seven hours but on the Saturday I'm doing a uh, 90 minutes two hours about the nature of reality and all the awakening side of it how uh, the process of awakening that we've been talking about now um, in the chat just now and and that's all